Hey eBay sellers, it's Suzanne A. Wells. Thank you for coming back for another video. And we have another super size eBay sales video today. The date is April 16th, 2018. These sales are taken from my Facebook group where we are now starting a monthly thread for sellers to brag about their sales that were over $100. So what we do is my group is called stay at home mom selling on eBay. You do not have to be a mom to be in the group. That's just what we started off as in 2008 and we have grown to almost 30,000 members now and we can't change the name. So um, you'll find a thread. This is the March thread. We're going to be starting one for April probably at the end of the week. So this is a great place to learn what is selling, where people are finding it, and how long it takes things to sell. Um, this is the most educational thing you can do for your business, in my opinion, is look at what is working for other sellers and take that information to uh, your own business to grow it and be more successful. So last week we stopped at Lisa's sale of her leather jacket. So we're gonna go on down to summer who had this uh, Patagonia uh, jacket. It was $1.25 at a churchyard sale. Sold on 10 day auction for $202. So let's see what is going on with this one. And summer is in, where did it say you are? Rapid City, South Dakota. So doesn't matter where you are, you can find stuff to sell. So this is a Patagonia Classic Retro X Fleece Jacket. It's one of these, um, it looks like it's inside out, but it's not. Uh, Mountain Hardware makes one like this. It's called a monkey jacket, and for because the fur looks like it's a monkey. Um, so this is very similar to that. I've sold that before. And let's see, she's got her description there. Um, it even has a hole in the collar, so it wasn't perfect. The fleece is quite matted down, uh, but that's okay. So she's got her measurements there, and let's take a look at her auction, where she started it off at $9.99, and it went all the way up to $202, and she paid $1.25 for this at a churchyard sale and sold it in 10 days. Where else in the world can you legally do this kind of thing, make this kind of money with such a small investment and such little risk? So that is fantastic. We've got some comments below here. Um, people are just discussing auction versus fixed price. Um, let's see what else we have. So no, no further information about this particular item, just uh, Patagonia brings good money. It's highly desirable. Yes, it is. So Summer, that was fantastic. Oh, and here she is again with another item that she paid $1.25 for. And this was a Diane von Furstenberg dress. Let's see if it's the classic wrap. It looks like it is. Perfect. Yes, that is the classic Diane von Furstenberg wrap dress that became so popular in the 70s. I have a video about that, so check it out if you don't know this brand or this style of dress. Um, this, this dress made her an icon in fashion because it, um, as she said, hides a multitude of flaws and uh, it just was very popular. I think everybody in the 70s from teenager up had one of these. So very nice item there. Um, let's see. Let me just see what she says. She's got her measurements here. And I don't know if this one's actually vintage. She's got the tag on it there. That does not look vintage. But it, that's okay. It doesn't matter. They're still expensive. Um, the vintage tags are, are pretty easily recognizable. So she took a best offer of 120 after a couple of weeks. So if you are not familiar with Diane von Furstenberg, also DVF, it's referred to that um, 
acronym in some uh, seller groups and that type of thing um, get to know it because this one can make you a lot of money so summer you did well at that church sale okay Cheryl bought this in a lot of jewelry that she paid twenty dollars for it contained 30 items so cost for this was about 66 cents sold for full asking price of hundred and sixty five dollars after four weeks looks like a beautiful piece of jewelry let's see what we've got here Matt Bazak cast glass dragonfly pendant sterling silver trim and necklace chain so this is a funky piece of jewelry you can see the dragonfly is raised there uh, at least it looks like it is it looks like it's made of a pretty stone very fun pretty colors dragonflies are a popular thing it's got the signature there on the bottom which is very important with jewelry comes with the chain perfect she has her nice concise description there and let's see where are you located Valley Center California and Cheryl said this was a lot of jewelry that she paid twenty dollars for and then they're having a little discussion here about the jewelry and um, maybe Cheryl knows about this and knew to look for this designer not sure about that okay then we've got Linda who bought this large vintage plush for three dollars sold for two hundred and twenty nine dollars ninety nine cents in one day sent to Germany via the global shipping program was shipping that the buyer paid $255 so the total was that um, I believe it eventually wound up being over $300 for her so let's see what this is it's a plush large Afghan hound 48 inch wow that looks almost real um, laying down vintage plush stuffed animal so let's take a look at the pictures here looks like a real dog and there is the tag which she used to look up the brand and the value very nice and she's got her nice concise description there with measurements that's very important please if you want to increase your sales and you're not putting measurements try it that's all I can say I can't guarantee anything's gonna happen but what goes on here is if you don't have the information there that the buyer needs they may not take the time to ask you they're just gonna move on because eBay has a reputation for sellers not being quick with their answers uh, for not communicating quickly and uh, buyers don't want to wait they want to buy what they want to buy and get it in the mail and move on so if you don't have what they need on your listing they may not take the time to ask you and there's no way to measure how many sales you may have lost because you didn't have measurements on there there's no way to know it's it's a complete unknown because they just leave they just move on to somebody else and they don't ask you so I have found it best to anticipate what buyers are going to ask and you will get better at this as you do this business longer I know we've got a lot of new people listening but the more questions you're asked over time that's going to help you determine what to put in your listing if you keep getting questions about what's the measurement on the belt loops or um, you know what's the measurement of the buttonholes or things like that um, then you'll know to put it in there that's how I learned I just kept getting the same questions over and over again and then I realized you know I'm just gonna put this on every single listing um, all my clothes have measurements and um, because some people won't ask they're just gonna skip over you so here this is a case of you don't know what you don't know here so I encourage you to go back through and put measurements on your listings if especially if you're selling clothing but other items too I mean like this this plush they may have had a certain place they want to put this and is it gonna fit there so it's important with home decor items um, anything decorative um, linens you know make sure you have that tablecloth measurement linen napkins things like that um, so people will know what they're getting so anyway I, I digress uh, Linda that was a fantastic sale and 
another um, plug for international shipping because who knows how long it would have taken to sell if that nice German person didn't come along and buy it from you quickly. Okay, Sharon paid $6 at a thrift store, sold this for $128.69. And this is a jacket. It is a Barber Classic Durham Hooded Waxed Coat Jacket. Um, this is also, we kind of, well, I don't know if you call it a, a raincoat or a windbreaker. No, that's not really a raincoat. I guess it could be. It's just not like vinyl slicker material. It has a waxy texture where it's probably moisture proof. And there's that, um, the brand name Barber. She's got all the tags on there. She is located in Palm Bay, Florida. And she sold for $128.69. Um, that looks like it went for full price and who knows why the price is that number. Um, maybe that's her inventory system or maybe she had it on sale and that was the sale price. It's hard to know without her telling us. Okay, then we've got Everardo. I'm not even going to try. Is it Orozoco? Somebody help me on that one. <laughs> but what a fun name. Um, paid a dollar for this book at an estate sale, was listed as seven day auction, and sold for $129.99 plus shipping. And it is a vintage, a lot of vintage Wizard of Oz books. Wow. Those are cool. I love finding old stuff like that. Yes, those definitely look old. Some collector's going to be really happy with those. Somebody's trying to uh, add to their collection probably. Oh, and only one bid. So he was smart there. He started it off at what he wanted. And he got it. So uh, let me caution you again on auctions. Make sure that whatever you started at, you're willing to take. Because this is this is a contract. If, you, if you're foolish and you do these 99 cent auctions on things that you don't really want to give away for 99 cents, um, you're going to be stuck with that. And that's what a lot of new people do, thinking that their auctions are going to be bid up and there's going to be this bidding war and all, the, you know, all this excitement is going to happen. And sometimes it does, but nothing like it used to be years ago. Um, you just don't see that very much anymore unless it is a a unique or rare or unusual item which this is so Edward uh, let's see how does he say his name Everardo is in Azusa California so wherever he went and got these at an estate sale great find okay Susan bought this at a thrift store for 15 cents had it sitting in her cell cabinet for six months because I didn't realize it was a quart size can. Was so happy to get $354 for it. You have to have those good sales once in a while. This is why I still do a lot of auctions. So let's take a look at this can. It is a vintage Edelweiss light beer quart cone top beer can with lid. Looks like Susan is quite a seasoned seller here. She's got over 10,000 feedbacks, so that tells us a lot about her and her experience. And that's something you want to look for when you're doing um, completed listings and doing your research on things. People ask this all the time, and I need to do a video on this, but you know, why do prices vary so much on completed listings? You might find one thing for 20 bucks and the same exact item for 200. Why the difference? If you will look at the seller when you are researching completeds, and like in this case, Susan, I'm going to pick on you, um, look at her. She's got 10,000 feedbacks, which means she's probably had 25,000 sales because you, you just don't get feedback for every transaction. Um, she's been doing this since 2003, and she's got, uh, for this month alone, the last month she sold got 155 feedbacks so probably has sold over 300 items so this is a sign that that person knows what they're doing 
okay um, so when you're looking at completeds and you see somebody who's got a feedback score of 12 and their price is really low that tells you they're new and they probably didn't price it right so looking at completed listings is more than just looking at the price you have to look at the big picture I'm a big picture person you've got to look at everything did they offer international shipping yes or no did they have enough pictures did they describe it well um, I don't think top rated has that much to do with when you're researching pricing I think it's more of looking at these sellers longevity how long have they been selling how much feedback do they have and how frequently are they selling items because that's going to show that they have an established uh, track record you know they're credible they're experienced and they know what they're doing so she is located in Mason City Iowa and let's look at the pictures of her can here this is the $350 can. Can you believe that? Some collector really wanted this. And she had it sitting on her shelf for six months. So that is another case of don't let things sit there. I know life happens and you get behind, but you know, it just kills me when people say, How can I increase my sales? And my first question is, how many things do you have have you bought that you haven't listed yet? Oh, about two hundred. Well, that's your first job right there, getting everything listed. So this is a huge sale. And she did this on auction. So let's take a look at how many bids she got. And she started it at $34.99 and it went up to $354.99. And no comments on this. I'm curious, Susan, if you see this video. Um, as far as did you know that you that it would go this high um, obviously you were happy to get three hundred and fifty four dollars for it but um, I just am curious if you were surprised by that selling price because um, that's huge so congratulations on that okay Melanie Johnson this was purchased along with many other items from an estate not sure what the cost of it of just this item would have been sold yesterday after four days for $149.99 plus shipping. So you hear that? Four days. Get busy listing. Be inspired by these sales. And if that's what it takes to light a fire under you and get you going, then watch these videos because they are, this and the Money Making Mondays are really inspiring to me. So this is a blue and white uh, ginger jar. It's a Chinese type vase with a lid and she sold it for her full asking price she is located in Ukiah California and here's just her description short sweet to the point she's got her measurements on there she's got plenty of pictures of all sides of it so no questions asked there there's nothing wrong with it um, she did a great job on that hundred and forty nine dollars and it's sold in four days so congratulations here we've got Christy Foreman found this at the Goodwill outlet and paid two dollars for it sold in three hours for a best offer of two hundred fifty dollars I knew I had something good when another seller at the bins offered me twenty bucks for it <laughs> that's right Christy when that happens you just hang on to it and get it out to your car lock it in your car and uh, get it home and get it on eBay because when somebody offers you money for it on the spot you know you've got something okay um, so let's see what this is vintage Chimayo I guess that's how you say it blanket jacket southwestern 1950s vintage jacket here so it's got the beautiful stitching on it and the southwestern design you can tell this is a vintage tag um, so it's a blanket jacket and it's got the pretty silver button on the front there you go very nice and she is located in Sacramento California and she found this at the bins the Goodwill bins for those of you that don't know what that means it's the Goodwill outlet what happens is things are sold there by the pound um, I know that all of our stuff in Atlanta goes there um, maybe not all of it but what happens is we don't have the outlet here in Atlanta 
so after the item has been in the store for a month and it's been on the color rotation it's either sold to other thrift stores or sent out to the outlets where things are sold by the pound so that's what that means and she's got her description here with her measurements um, wonderful and what does it say she took the best offer of $250 but that's okay it sold in three hours where else can you do that um, purchase something take it home list it and it it flips for that much money fantastic okay Linda I'm finally getting to your pillow <laughs> this was the cover of the last video and I didn't realize it was gonna go so long so I didn't get to Linda's listing she bought this double D ranch home pillow for four dollars at St. Vincent's that is a, a thrift store um, some people call it St. Vinny, but uh, for those of you listening, it's St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, it's a thrift store. And it sold for $179.99 in eight days. So, again, get your items listed so they can sell. I need to make a record singing that. Sorry, a recording. I'm old school. I say records. Um, you know, when I tell my kids, you sound like a broken record, they have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, okay, this is her pillow. Beautiful uh, design there with the patriotic, with the flags. It's got some beading on it and these um, metal studs. Beautiful hand beading and fringe. And there is the label this is what you want to look for if you're listening take a minute and look at the computer at this label this is what you want to look for this is a very expensive brand it's called true double D brand home collection I've seen this posted on money making Mondays also um, so burn that into your memory right now or take a screenshot whatever however you save those things um, remember that so let's see what she had to say about this. There's some replies under here. Um, just talking about it's not her style. And Linda says that it's an expensive brand that has a loyal following and the Double D Ranch home line was discontinued. They have a very successful clothing line to watch for too. So there you go. That's why it's so valuable is because this was discontinued. So Thank you for sharing that, Linda. I'm sorry it took me a week to get back to you on that. Okay, Megan. She did not say where she got this. Oh, found this at a thrift store for a dollar, and it sold for $495.99. Oh, my gosh, are you kidding me? I need to go shopping with some of you people. Um, this is a traditional Japanese kabuki samurai hand-painted needlepoint. Wow. So let's see, is it, it's not even finished, it's just the, the pattern for it. Like someone's going to have to actually do the needlepoint part because it's just the canvas. So for those of you that are not knowledgeable about um, needlework, I am doing a class on that this year, so that's going to be coming. But um, what this is, is like the pattern. So you would actually have to buy the the thread and you just follow what the pattern is here and then it would we all be filled in with the thread so um, I remember when I first started doing cross stitch back in I guess it was the early 80s it was like a hobby you know before the internet before we were all distracted by technology and we actually sat down and did hobbies um, they didn't have this stamp stuff it was or I never saw it um, you just had a book and then you had your blank uh, fabric and you would just follow the pattern from the book onto the the fabric you know making all these little X's for things so I was really happy when I started finding more kits with the stamped um, patterns on them because you could follow them easier so I digress again but bottom line there is I'm coming up with a class on needlework to help explain what all this is what you should buy what different needlework arts are called all that kind of stuff but let's get back to this listing here because this is very fascinating um, traditional Japanese art hand-painted needlepoint canvas 
Now, what, how did she know this was worth so much? Did anybody ask her that? Okay. Um, Megan says, I was surprised because it was stuffed in the patterns in a shelf at the thrift store. I always look at the artist names on eBay, and this artist's artist solds range from $40 to $500. So for a dollar, she couldn't pass it up. Um, that's, you know, that's my motto. For a dollar, you don't, can't really lose anything. And Megan is, we are talking about Megan, right? Yeah. <laughs> Located in San Marcos, Texas. So she, don't know which thrift store she went to, but that's where she is. Um, yeah, and I'm going to start saying where people are from because it's fascinating when you've got several sellers in the same area that one finds a lot of stuff and the other one is like, why can't I find anything? So I want to enlighten you on what's being found in your area, again, to motivate you to get out there and find this stuff because it's out there. Okay, Jessica paid $10 at a hospice thrift store sold for best offer of $100 back in January. That's, it says St. John. If you're not familiar with this brand, I've got a video about that. Check it out above. Um, very different than St. John's Bay. St. John's Bay is J.C. Penney. St. John is um, couture, very high-end clothing pieces that retail for th over, th you know, thousands of dollars. So when you find this stuff, it's it's a good find. Um, this is a nice, very tailored-looking set. Um, I call this the Emily Gilmore look for those of you that watch Gilmore Girls. <laughs> That's what my daughter Melanie uh, talks about, you know, classically styled, tailored clothing for mature ladies. She calls it, oh, Emily Gilmore. So, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, but you can see St. John has such beautiful detailing, like this little gold chain here behind the tag. The buttons are um, just extraordinary. They are so beautiful and have such exquisite detail. Um, you'll know when you see one. If you've never found one and all you see are the buttons, you'll know. So these are so so gorgeous. And so she's got her pictures there and uh, oh look at that beautiful exquisite detailing on the end of the sleeve. Um, a lot of time goes into making these garments and um, that's one of the things I explain in uh, my clothing classes is um, it's what makes clothing expensive is the human hours that are put into making it. It's the skilled tailoring. You know, when you've got these factories in uh, China and Vietnam and, you know, all over Asia where things are just created in a matter of minutes, the quality is so much lower than beautifully handcrafted, well-tailored garments made in Italy um, or wherever, just depending on the brand, where you've actually got a skilled tailor or seamstress working on it, putting all these details on it. That's what makes it expensive. So let's see what she says here. Um, somebody asked her if it was a hospice. Yes, hospice thrift store. There's, You're going to find stuff in all different kinds of thrift stores. For those of you that are not getting out of your comfort zone and you're only going to the Goodwill outlets or you only go to Savers, um, I encourage you to check out my video on other ways to find, what is it? I think it's called Thrift Store Prices Too High. It's about how to find stuff in other ways not just going to the big chain thrift stores because a lot of these small charities humane society hospice um, hospitals have them churches have them and the stuff is not manhandled as much as it would be in a, a major chain uh, thrift store it's often in much better condition and they often don't know what they have. They have no idea of the value of these things. So like everything's a dollar or everything's two dollars. And um, so you, you need to get out of your comfort zone because Jessica here, you know, she's she's at this little hospice thrift store, but look what she found. So good sale on that. Okay, Janet purchased this for a dollar at a yard sale and sold on best offer of a hundred dollars. 
it is a leather jacket I've seen a lot of those in this thread who said leather was dead not me um, leather jacket coat motorcycle women's large Wilson's on and on with the keywords very good so where is she located oh I didn't did I say where Jessica was located let me go back give her give her five minutes of fame she's in Springfield Oregon okay so I don't want to out your thrift store there Jessica but just telling people where you're at okay now we are back on the leather jacket here and this is in Mount Pleasant Michigan beautiful leather jacket it's got the elastic around the waist which is great for um, bikers so the wind doesn't blow up the jacket like when you're riding yes I have been on a motorcycle a time or two and it, it gets cold um, it's got a liner that's removed removable and the this is good here with the zip turtleneck keep you warm when you're riding looks like it's very heavy duty Wilson's leather that's a great brand been around a long time and she's got her nice description there her measurements great job so Janet good job on that one okay now we've got Jessica Van Hove her husband made a friend at the Goodwill bins who likes to sell him the Walkman Discman units that he can't sell so they bought this for five dollars sold for two hundred and fifty dollars overnight and it wasn't even working <laughs> talk about trash to cash so this um, was on eBay Canada there um, is this another Jessica yes it is Jessica is located in Montreal and here is her vintage um, Walkman type item I don't know if it's actually a Sony Walkman it's not but that's okay that's it's kind of the name for these things you call it a Walkman even though it's not kind of like every tissue is Kleenex that kind of thing um, I had a Walkman and I loved it I wore that thing out I wore the tapes out actually I'd play them over and over and they would get all scratchy and squeaky until they wouldn't play anymore um, so this is a nice looking piece there fantastic I love I love to see that this just makes me feel like we don't need corporate America we can do this um, you know I just feel like I'm getting away with something when when I see this happening like um, you just go out there and find junk and sell it and make money and it's just that easy you know it really is <laughs> okay here's Jessica again oh this is the the cover the pencils so yay we're getting to it here she says I sell colored pencils bought in bundles from her local savers I keep a box of my shorter pencils and sell those in large bundles this was a combination of three listings original cost is difficult to calculate but probably around 10 to 15 dollars is a good estimate now Jessica I'm not outing you because you put this on a group with 30,000 members so I'm not trying to out your niche here but this is definitely a niche because she knows what she's doing here um, I believe this is pronounced Laurentian um, maybe it's French I'm not sure um, but she's in Canada so American dollars this was around hundred and three dollars for some colored pencils there's a whole discussion on the group here about what these pencils are if you want to go read it that's fine um, Jessica's sharing some of what she knows but I respect her decision not to give away too much information because this is a niche that she figured out and she's making money on it so I totally respect that you don't have to share every detail because but she shared a lot of information here um, and bottom line is you may find a niche that works and then it doesn't work anymore so you just have to keep learning so check that out on my Facebook group you can find this thread just by searching uh, put in a hundred dollars in this search and you'll find this thread okay Emily paid $7.99 for this set thought it was pretty and unique in the store looked it up and learned a ton about the designer and fabric maker had it listed way higher and accidentally sold it for less still a good deal so let's see this is Alfred 
Shaheen Vintage Outfit. She sold it for $159.20. And she went with her gut because it looked cool. It's sparkly. It's shiny. It's got a very interesting cut on this jacket or top, whatever that is. Very interesting there. The fabric is pretty. Alfred Shaheen, Hawaii. So that's definitely one to look for. It's got a little bit of a flaw there. No problem. Still sell it. Pretty crystal or glass buttons. She's showing the liner there that looks perfectly fine. Some more vintage tags. And how much did she pay for this? $7.99. And she is located in Bozeman, Montana. Wow, she is way out there. Um, but she's finding stuff. When I say way out there, meaning like I'm in Atlanta, so that seems really far away to me. <laughs> um, that's pretty much all the way across the country. So that's an interesting, very interesting item. And she has a good eye there. Okay, we've got Marisa, who paid a dollar at a consignment store clearance, sold for best offer of $170. Let's see what this is. This is St. John three-piece skirt set. So let's take a look at this. Very nice. Those interesting buttons. St. John collection by Marie Gray. There you go. Great find. And Marisa is in Cincinnati. And where'd she say? She bought it for a dollar at a consignment store clearance. So there you go. She didn't, wasn't at the bins, wasn't at Goodwill, wasn't at Savers. It was a consignment store clearance. Now she's got another one here, paid $9 at St. Vincent de Paul, sold for full asking price of $125. Anthropology Tracy Reese. Okay, I've got one of these sitting right next to me <laughs> that I need to list, so I'm going to do that. Um, it's a dress, and but this is, is this a jacket? Yes, it's a jacket coat. Very nice. That's gorgeous. Look at that interesting um, lapel there with the exaggerated floral with the buttons. That is exquisite. And there's the tag. It's Plenty by Tracy Reese. This is an anthropology line. So you can tell a lot of times the anthropology tags are very striking. They're, they pop with color. Or sometimes they're just totally plain and you would never know. Um, but for starters, if, if you're just getting into this, um, these anthropology tags, they're, they're fat. They're like, you know, three inches by three inches. They're pretty big. So when you see something like that, you can stop and look it up. It's $125, and that only cost her $9. So that is money well spent. Okay, we've got Lisa Bush Darwin. She paid a dollar for this. Uh, I'm not sure. It was between a dollar and five dollars. Sold for best offer of $125 after several months. This is another Alfred Shaheen. Okay, so we've got two people with this brand this week on the over $100 thread. So are we learning labels? Yes, we are, because I'd never heard of that either. This is a gorgeous coat. Look at that beautiful coral color silvery sheen on it and those are called frog closures where it's not really a button but it well I don't know if that's a frog closure um, that's the closest thing I can think of there's probably a better name but um, they're not buttons let's see if she's got it in the listing um, I don't know, she doesn't have the description of that kind of button, but that wouldn't be important in your title anyway. I was just trying to describe it. So this was how much? Less than $5, sold on best offer of $125 after several months. And Lisa is located in Plano, Texas. So the other one was found in, what, Montana? And this one was found in Texas. So these brands are out there. Now we've got Dawn, who paid $10 at a garage sale, sold for $149.97. Let's see what this is. Women's Harley Davidson leather motorcycle chaps with fringe. 
So more motorcycle stuff. I'm noticing a theme here. Motorcycle stuff is selling for over $100 sometimes. It's nice pictures. Let's see if she's got the brand on here. Yep, there it is. Harley Davidson. I definitely would have bought these too. LW stands for Large Women's, in case you didn't know. And this is Dawn. She paid $10 for those. They sold for $149.97 and she is located in Melbourne, Florida. Lots of bikers in Florida. So apparently this one just uh, didn't need his chaps anymore or she didn't need her chaps anymore. Okay, now we've got Gracie. Bought these at an estate sale on January 21st for $5. Listed on Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay. Nothing. Finally, on March 23rd, received a message asking if I could overnight to Miami. The cost was too high, so we went with Monday morning delivery. Sold for $168.88 plus $48 shipping. Her profit was $147.07. Let's see what this is. And she says that she assumes the buyer was a drop shipper, bought it from her to resell at a higher price since he asked for no invoice in the box. That could be. Um, you just never know. Maybe it was a gift to somebody. These are, whoops, let me go back here. Renee Calvilla, butterfly crystal embellished sandal slingback heel size 6. These are gorgeous. Look at this. Oh, that purple. That's just beautiful. Those are absolutely exquisite. Oh, how lovely. If you're not looking at your computer, you should and, and take a look at this. Because I know a lot of y'all listen while you're listening. So this is just gorgeous. These aren't in perfect condition either. So let's see. She bought them for $5 at an estate sale, and then she sold them, and her profit was $147. And she is located in Torrance, California. That's great. Fantastic, Gracie. Good sale. Okay, Laura bought for $1.99 at Goodwill, sold in five months for best offer of $200 plus shipping. This is a Redken Spray Starch. Um, it's a styling product. It's a hair product. And I will say that these do sell well if you find them. Um, now you can sell these even if they're partially used. Um, I'll find, I find those at Goodwill all the time, stuff that's partially used. But if it's um, brand new, even better. And if it's discontinued, even better than that. So she is located in Yelm, Washington. And there's a bunch of comments on this, so let's see what this says. What's so special about this stuff? And Laura says, big bottle, old style, possibly discontinued and brought back under another name. From what I hear from hairstylists, this stuff is gold. Um, there you go. So it was probably discontinued, packaging change. Uh, companies do this all the time just to act like their product is new and improved and it's probably smaller and less good. Uh, <laughs> but uh, when I was in the grocery business, I just saw this all the time. They would discontinue a product for a while. It wasn't really discontinued. It was a packaging change. It would come back. But during that window of when you couldn't find it and the new one came out, you could make a lot of money on the old ones if you found them. Okay, Gigi. Nine dollars at Goodwill sold for a hundred and two fifty. Let's see what this is. Looks like a ceiling fan. No, <laughs> wrong. Um, what is this? Let me look at what categories it's in. Oh, it's toys and hobbies, science fiction, Gundam, G U N D A M. Look, I thought it was a ceiling fan. <laughs> um, I don't even know what this is. Is it like, oh, it's a model. Okay. There you go. And where did Gigi get it? $9 at Goodwill and sold for $102.50. She put that on auction, started it at $99. She got her price. And where is Gigi located? She is in Bentonville, Arkansas, home of Walmart. There you go. You can sell anything, even if you don't know what it is. Okay, Brian 
paid three dollars for this mixed lot of mini discs at an estate sale sold for 249 in about three days and what is this a lot of 97 used mini discs Maxell Memorex okay yeah I remember these these are like um, mini like mini uh, DVD things that you record on Wow what a what a collection and Brian is located in Chandler Arizona for those of you out there that um, have been watching his amazing sales paid three dollars for that and sold for two forty nine ninety nine in about three days there you go we've got Michelle paid five dollars found at a church thrift store under the purses in a corner sold for full asking price of two forty nine oh it's a Hartman no wonder I found a Hartman once, but it was locked, and we couldn't get it unlocked, and I don't even know what happened to it. Um, so Hartman is a very well-established luggage brand. It has a rich history. Their items are very well made. I think they're guaranteed for life, something like that. Um, but this is a like a satchel t kind of brief briefcase kind of thing. What she call it? Laptop bag. Okay, in the olden days, we called them satchels. I don't know if people use that word anymore. Um, she is located in Jacksonville, Florida. Paid $5 and sold for $249. So it pays to look through the luggage. It pays to look everywhere because you never know where something's going to be stuck. And she said it was in the purses, so maybe they just put it there by accident, or maybe somebody stuck it there on purpose and they were going to come back and get it later. You never know. I find people's stashes all the time. It's like, hey, so sad, too bad, I found it. You know, can't hide for long in a thrift store. Okay, Susan bought this for $10 at a thrift store, sold for $112. And it is a Willis and Geiger men's poplin safari pants so let's take a look at these oh wow those are nice and they are safari pants so they've got the the tag there and a little bit about the company history so I've never heard of this company I wonder if it's like Eddie Bauer or something like that Wills Willis and Geiger so if you don't know what that is um, now you do and who is this again? Susan, located in Marble Fall, Falls, Arkansas. So that's a fantastic sale. Ten bucks turned it into 112. Okay, now we're getting down into Catherine's ties. I'm not going to show each one of these, but uh, these are several ties that she sold for over a hundred dollars. So let's just take a quick look at one of them. And this is a 1940s Wembley men's necktie. Rockabilly, that's a great keyword. And it sold for $150 for a tie. Now I wonder if she is a tie expert or how did she know this? Because the ties and jewelry I have not figured out. It all looks the same to me. So we don't have a lot of comments here. Let's see. Nope, no information on how she knew that. Okay, let's move on to the next item. Catherine also found these shoes at a church thrift store for $5 and sold them for $130. They are Salvador Ferragamo men's shoes, loafer style shoe, black patent leather, $171. And who is this again? This is Catherine. She is located in Hawley, Minnesota. These are nice. Yes, the bottoms are a little worn, but that's it's nothing to get shoes like this resold. The cost does not compare to a cost of brand new shoes of this quality. So it seems like men especially, their shoes are, are more worn on the bottom. They tend to wear them till they fall apart. Women, you know, have a lot of shoes and don't wear them out the way men do, in my experience. Okay, Marsha Turner. She found this embroidered piece, which she thought was a pillow, turned out to be a, a tablecloth. 
paid $3.99 and sold it for $175. And I know Marcia is located in New York, actually Pittsburgh, New York. This is a hand-stitched needlework astrology, cruel, that's a type of stitchery, uh, tablecloth. So you can see um, the beautiful, this is gorgeous. The stitching is just gorgeous. Needlework is such an art and it's, it could be very valuable as you can see. Um, and I think the fact that this was the, the signs of the zodiac also made it valuable because that some people are really into that. So congratulations, great sale, Mar uh, Marcia. Okay, Dawn bought at a garage sale for $10 with a lot of other drum items about three months ago, listed in the last four weeks. Sold for $160 plus $49.99 shipping. And this is a amplifier. So if you are into the electronics and that kind of stuff and you would have known what this is, <laughs> which I do not, she's also in Melbourne, Florida. So whoever it was before that or was that you? No, I don't think it was somebody else that was in Melbourne. So, and she paid $10 with some other items. So she probably paid, paid less than that, sold for 160 Okay, Shelly bought this, let's see, bought three of these for $5 each and then decided to go back the next day to see if the fourth one was out, and it was. She sold the set for thirteen hundred dollars wow look at this what is this Trowbridge gallery framed Abraham Munting botanical prints wow thirteen hundred dollars look at that that set now how did she know these okay so there's stuff on the back that's always a clue if there's something like this on the back and they all have that. That's when you stop and look it up. She is in Chandler, Arizona. Out there with, um, I think it was Brian. And I can't believe nobody's commented on this. Um, wow, what a profit. That's fantastic, Shelly. Congratulations. Okay, Rebel, estate sale vintage hat. Paid $5 for it and it sold for, whoops, how did we get there? $135. That's a cool looking hat. Vintage Frank Olive for I Magnon woven metallic silver wide brim hat. Beautiful. And that was how much? five dollars sold for 135 and she is located in Palm Desert California okay I think we're getting yep we're almost to the end here Alicia paid a dollar fifty for this at a little thrift store a few weeks before Valentine's Day listed it right away and it sold in two days for hundred thirty dollars with free shipping so it's the Robert Indiana love sculpture it has like the crooked O has the letters stacked but the O is tilted to the side um, it was only three by three by one and a half so small little and it sold for hundred and thirty dollars oh well how about that Alicia I didn't know you were my neighbor right up the street in Cartersville that's just 30 minutes from me so I could have found that except I don't go up that way <laughs> Great sale, Alicia. Okay, Yvonne paid two dollars at a local thrift store. Took a best offer of a hundred after about three months. Would have liked to get more, but I'll take it. Hundred and ninety-nine, ninety-seven. Let's see, she took a best offer of a hundred dollars. I would have taken that. So these are some funky Converse shoes. They don't match. Those look like um, like surfer like <laughs> Jeff Spicoli shoes. <laughs> Vintage Converse skid grip high top sneakers, mismatched. 
and Yvonne is located in Beavertown, Pennsylvania. So very nice job. Okay, so we're at the end. Um, wow, what a bunch of impressive sales. You guys are great. I mean, this just is so inspiring. It makes me want to get busy busier. <laughs> so look for this thread to be started again on my group um, soon. I think maybe around the 20th, not sure. Again, it's stay at home mom selling on eBay. And don't be shy. Post your sales. Um, correct me if I've said anything wrong in this video, pronounce things wrong because um, <laughs> I'm just throwing myself out there and sometimes this Georgia girl does not pronounce things correctly. So thanks so much for watching everybody and have a profitable and productive day on eBay. Bye.